Meanwhile, it's 7 a.m. in Las Vegas, where people are waking up to the tragedy. Another mass shooting, and this time at the University of Nevada. The alleged gunman killed three people and wounded another near the university's business school building. Our CBS affiliate in Las Vegas has identified the suspect as Tony Polito. He was reportedly a former college professor who had recently been denied a job at the university. So we're still waiting to learn more about the names of the victims. Uh, UNLV's campus uh, will be closed for the rest of the week, though. So now we want to bring in former FBI supervisory special agent Eric Miller to discuss uh, the shooting investigation and where we go from here. So, Eric, what does the FBI's involvement look like with a situation like this? Well, Amory, right now the FBI will be working with the local police department in Las Vegas to assist them in conducting any search warrants or uh, conducting any uh, interviews with you know, former colleagues, with family, with friends. Uh, the, the search warrants will mainly be around electronic devices, anything that may contain email communications, text messages, uh, for the sole purposes of identifying a motive. So uh, in situations like this, when the shooter has been killed and uh, maybe the FBI or local authorities interview family and friends, turns out uh, this person was angry, disturbed individual, as it often is in these, in these uh, mass shootings, um, what is then done uh, by the FBI in that in an investigation of that nature? What is gained by learning the information after the fact when the shooter has been neutralized? Well, it really goes back to creating a profile of shooters, and it, it assists the FBI in helping to educate the local, state, and, and uh, other federal partners on trends that they're seeing with shooters that are involved in, in incidents like this. But those interviews and, and the analysis that goes on after the fact also helps um, point to, again, motive, because many times motive is not as clear cut uh, as you know we initially might think it is when we start the investigation. So a number of interviews have to be conducted and a, a lot of analysis has to be conducted. And then at that point, we can see a whole picture and then compare that to other shooters that they've seen in, in the past, again, to really look at trends and identifying what that profile may look like and will help educate the law enforcement community uh, as well as uh, mental health uh, and, and uh, just communities at large. So they're better equipped to identify when they see certain indicators in their, their loved ones, their colleagues, um, or their friends. Um, and, and so we can be alerted early on to hopefully prevent this from ever happening. You know, uh, Eric, Las Vegas is, it's a unique city, right? Uh, with all these casinos, it's a tourist uh, attraction. Um, it's nothing, we said earlier, it's nothing but a series of soft targets. And unfortunately, it remains the location of still the worst mass shooting in American history. There was a tremendous amount of training after that Mandalay Bay shooting. And when we spoke to our correspondent earlier today, what we learned was that police did everything right. Can you talk about, I mean, they managed to, and the phrase is to neutralize the suspect rather quickly. Can you talk about how they approach this situation? It's a very difficult situation. Uh, police and law enforcement and first responders do everything they can uh, to react to those situations. As far as preventing them, you're correct. They're all soft targets, and the only prevention is to make them hard targets. And that's a tough question, and a, and a, and a really, well, there's no easy answer because it comes down to making those uh, security decisions and creating a security posture that may not um, facilitate their business. It may be difficult. It may hinder their ability to get people in and out of their businesses. So. It really comes down to a decision by individual companies and, and property owners that uh, they really need to decide exactly what kind of security posture they're willing to accept. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and really, that's what it comes down to, um, that question of making it a, a, a hard target. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, just another devastating story out of Las Vegas. And uh, as you made the point, uh, a community in a city that uh, is already still shaken from uh, the worst mass shooting in U.S. history at Mandalay Bay. Uh, Eric Miller, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you joining us this morning.